All right, everyone, AFD is becoming more popular in Germany. They're poised to, they, they suffered a fairly brutal number of losses in recent history, where they came in far short of what they originally anticipated. Now, on the eve of the German election, it looks like finally they get their breakthrough moment. They may become the third largest party in Germany. That's quite a, an accomplishment. The same as Front National. By the way, getting to the second ballot and getting more than a third of the vote in the French elections, the same as Wilders managing to grab a hold of additional legislative power to the point at which the center-left collapsed so completely that the far-left had to jump aboard with the establishment there in order to govern it all. Uh, you saw Hoffer narrowly getting beaten by Van der Bellen. There was electoral fraud. They redo the election. The same basic result happens again. There's probably fraud in the second one as well. Let's not kid ourselves here. Not to be sour grapes here, but if you have problems the first time around, the second time around, you probably have some problems as well. All over Europe, what's the similarity in all these situations? It's the collapse of centrism. Now this is both good and very bad. It's good because as we go through our worldwide paradigm shift, which is taking slightly different forms in slightly different places, um, the, the collapse of centrism so-called really means the collapse of the established order in favor of, and here's the bad part, groups that are more or less good as replacements. Sometimes you get a group, they're fairly innocuous in their platform, they're not violent, they're not nuts, they've got good economic proposals, they're stable. It's just a replacement for the old establishment that has been refreshed, it's younger, it's more dynamic. Uh, I believe this, this to be the case with Farage's groups within the UK, that I see as a good thing. Front National, despite a far-left economic platform in most cases, I see as innocuous. Um, AFD, I, I would class as part of that. Anyone who's worried that AFD is going to be like marching jackboots down the street um, is kidding themselves, honestly. It's not going to happen. You should be far more worried about the rise of the far-left in Germany, having like a communist reaction movement than AFD. And this is what's happening all over uh, uh, Europe especially. It's happening here. Populists took a hold of the GOP. The far left, the progressives, are now gaining dominance within the Democratic Party. Now, it's too little too late for this election. Like, they're still going to get stomped by the neoliberals. The swamp, the, the never-Trump sort of neocons are still trying to suppress things. We saw what John McCain did with health care. Uh, and ran, too, for different reasons. I'll cover that later as well. Uh, here within uh, the United States. It's happening here, too. The center can no longer govern. We suffered for, for uh, an entire administration almost, for six years with Obama. The Republicans and Democrats could not govern. They could not do anything. The center is dysfunctional. This has happened all over Europe too. Now Macron comes along and says in France, well, yeah, we're gonna have to talk about this uh, Eurozone stuff because some of it's problematic. By the way, I'm Jupiter. And people, he quickly loses favor, although, I think his attitude is refreshing. Uh, again, I don't even, I, I would have, if I had been French, I would have voted for Le Pen. I would have voted for Le Pen if I were French. Macron would be like, eh, oh, okay, I'll, I'll try to deal with this. His latter statement, some of it's just pandering. But within Germany, you've got something different. I saw there were billboards that had been posted. I'm not sure because I don't speak German. I can't vouch for them being from AFD in an official capacity or whether some AFD fan put them up or a false flag, or it was a joke, or whatever. There were banners that said, oh, new Germans, we can make them ourselves, and shows sort of, you know, the, the rear end of a white woman sunbathing on the beach. Um, how is this racist? Now, you, the same people saying, well, that's evil Nazi stuff, it's despicable, because you're proclaiming that Germans should reproduce. That's a terrible, terrible thing, oh my goodness. These same people then in the same breath will say, oh, but Germany is like a multicultural melting pot already, and there are people from Turkey and Somalia and everywhere else in the world in Germany. So it's, you know, it's, uh, it's vibrant, it's diverse, it's no longer monolithic. Well, if that's the case, those posters are telling those individuals who have citizenship to breed too. So how is it about race? What's the problem here? Yeah, I don't see a problem. It's basically a, a backlash against Merkel. Of course, Merkel's thing is, oh, the new Germans will, you know, won't be from Germany. They'll be from elsewhere. Now, if the native population did, let me ask you this. If the native population was reproducing at a replacement rate so that you didn't have a demographic problem, 
And so that Germany's population density was remaining roughly the same, maybe growing a little bit, shrinking only slightly, roughly stable. Would you still want a bunch of people, would you still need for economic and demographic reasons people to come into Germany? Or would everything be hunky-dory? Here's the thing. Some of these groups are subversive. Some of these groups just hate native Germans. Yeah, I'm going to come out and say it. Some of these groups do, like George Soros, maybe. But the uh, alternative for Deutschland, Le Pen sort of individuals, they're shooting themselves in the foot. I'm going to give some good advice to the so-called far right, which includes far left groups economically like Front National. Uh, when you make your argument here, when you make that argument and boil it down to conspiracy stuff, uh, some people are receptive to that, but only within an echo chamber that already agrees with you. If you want to branch out further, what you say instead is that people have been misled over time. That they simply don't understand the dynamics of a situation in which the native population is openly discouraged from replacing itself by breeding, and in which it becomes economically and demographically a necessity for other people to come in to replace them. That's all you need to say. You don't need to go off into George. You don't need to go off into Glenn Beck talking about George Soros and stuffing his face with popcorn land. You remember when he was on Fox News when he uh, started rambling about pie and he's like, "Oh, this is a great pie. I'm gonna stuff it all over my face." And here's my slice of the pie, but here's Uncle Sam's slice and here's George Soros. He went crazy, and he doesn't change anyone's mind. He just looks like a lunatic. Stop being like a lunatic. You'll, people will be more receptive to your message. It's a little bit of golden advice there that some people just won't take. They think that if you don't go off into uh, nutland, that somehow you're cheapening yourself. You're nuts. It's nuts to make such arguments. It's not working. Uh, if you keep doing the same thing that's not working over time, yeah, you're a little bit insane. Alternative for Deutschland is not a racist movement. They're simply saying, hey, you know, uh, people are capable physically of breeding. Uh, we don't need to bring in millions more people. It's not necessary because we're capable of making more people in a biological sense. What's, where's the xenophobia? It's not saying, oh, well, we will admit zero people, new people into Germany. No, it's saying, well, fundamentally we can solve the bulk of the problem ourselves because there doesn't need to be a problem. And they're going to side with, you know, maybe the Eastern European states as far as the immigration stuff goes. Now, this won't kick Merkel to the curb. She'll still be, you know, Frau Merkel. She's still going to be in power, probably. Just makes things slightly more difficult for her. Uh, is kind of a slap in the face at her globalist policies, the pro-EU policies of Germany, in which Merkel really uh, is top dog. She's basically the emperor of Europe right now. I hope people realize this. Macron wants a seat at the table. He wants a junior partnership, and he sort of wants to, I think, strong arm his way a little bit into maneuvering France into the number one position. But then, I mean, this is how the EU dies anyway. When you get when you have monolithic power, it's quite stable. You have one person that is obviously the figurehead, which is Angela Merkel. Now you've got a challenger. That's a really problematic for the European Union. This sort of thing is why globalism will not work because people will stab each other in the back. They won't agree on what form globalism will take. Humans are very categorical and hierarchical. They want one top dog to control things. Uh, one group, one idea, one overarching philosophy. How are you supposed to get that when you get dozens of different European cultures rolled up into one? It won't work. The European Union is going to collapse. It's doomed already. Brexit was just the first uh, foreshock involved. So enjoy. Anything that makes Merkel's life more difficult is funny to me, especially since Germany has blocked my YouTube channel, the channel itself, not the videos, for, uh, yeah, since 2009 or thereabouts. Yeah, I've been blocked in Germany that whole time. Not once have I ever uploaded anything that under German law would be considered illegal. Not once. I don't have any copyrighted material on my channel. Somebody somewhere decided to make that decision in a conscious manner. It's not automated. I can tell you that much right now. Because the only videos I have are in two forms. I have some Radio Werewolf music that I have explicit permission, by the way, to have uploaded. Like, exp explicit written permission. Uh, and number two, me talking to a webcam. Often not on anything that has to do with politics. Sometimes I just sit there uh, uh, talking out my ass about some other topic. So, uh, what's Merkel's problem? I don't even think Merkel was in office back then, was she? Or was she? Uh, I don't remember when she first took office. But I would caution people one thing. Uh, AFD may make more or less gains in Germany. It doesn't give them control of the German government. 
what it gives them is seats at the table it gives them the shock value of actually being there because a lot of this will cause by the way a resurgence of the far left in germany and watch what happens here's how the establishment goes into a death spiral you want to know how one side that's considered fringe by the population gets a little power the other side all of a sudden freaks out gets emboldened campaigns twice as hard billets twice as hard speaks out twice as violently the far left rises up then people who are a little closer to the center on the right they see the far left well oh, that's scary and they join up with afd or some group then that makes them larger and then the far left grows because then they look and they say, oh the far right's still growing oh no we need countermeasures the center can't save us pretty soon there is no center everyone has pushed themselves to the side it's happened before happened in germany before happened in the 1930s who was fighting then? at first the 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 national socialists and the communists weren't taken seriously they were considered a joke by the center when times were good so what are you talking about what's all this bullshit uh, that you're spewing about communism or national socialism why the fuck would we need that give me another beer but then times get hard and both sides begin to feed off one another and there's violence as we see here in the united states you, you're noticing a little pattern here all over the world right now fringe elements so-called are growing the worst thing is though here's the real danger this uh, the, the collapse of the center is fundamentally good but here's the danger the danger is that within one of those now more fringe movements that has parted itself away from the center and from the other side so-called ideologues that speak very loudly and sometimes are given over to violent and psychotic tendencies tend to rise up within the ranks of these new movements more easily than they would in a centrist movement the centrists they they suffer from routine corruption and stagnation but a stable form of it you get an unstable form in newer movements that's the danger be very very careful with these new parties throughout europe especially europe especially because you're the ones given over to like you know doing the world war thing and we've got nukes now so be be cautious if that happens you can see the rise of extreme violence yes even in modern day europe despite the eu and nato and all these other comfy th the un all these other wonderful family friendly sounding things don't think it makes you immune to that kind of danger it doesn't the collapse of the center is good you should celebrate that don't let yourselves be given over to getting so far out there that you start fighting one another europe can have togetherness but it doesn't need the european union to do so had it before times can be better you don't need to destabilize your cultures it's basically you know afd represents essentially a center right movement just like uh, front national is technically a center left movement economically speaking le pen is to the left i think she's further left than uh than the people that were uh, running France, like even a Hollande would be on the same order or even a little bit further right. Just a Eurosceptic. Well, it's good to be Eurosceptic. Uh, I'm Eurosceptic too. I don't need to be part of Europe to realize the European Union's gonna fail. It's being torn apart. The center's collapsing all over Europe. It's, uh, the gig is already up. It's not gonna work. That's about all. Peace out.